ladies and gentlemen. But we got a little bit of something, something that we want to share with y'all. Okay, you men. They're right there. They know they're here. Redress. Commission. Did you hear something? I just need you all to understand that that is my greatest intro ever. I am so proud of that. And all of those different voices, man, that took skill. Um, wanted to talk about this particular thing. You guys are seeing quite a few videos on my channel that are two minutes, uh, three minutes, very short videos. That's taken from, this was from 2012. Um, what you need to know is there's information talking about the October surprise and what they were saying the government was planning. Well, what most people don't know is shortly after Obama came into office, <clears throat> excuse me, shortly after Obama came into office, <clears throat> shortly after Obama came into office, they decided to do what they referred to as a reset. Now, this was at the end. He had just been reelected. No, no, he had no. This is October, so he hadn't been reelected. He's about to be reelected, so he's about to be reelected. But this is when Hillary Clinton, you know, right after they decided to claim they were doing a reset with Russia, well, the government was saying they were postponing what they were getting ready to plan, and they are getting ready to plan it because you see it. You see that they're getting ready to do their so-called national currency and coins and all of that stuff and the id and the digital id and all of this stuff they're implementing and now you got surveillance everywhere look at all the cameras everywhere now look hey 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 i'm not knocking cameras because my cameras do me a bit of good okay i'm not joking about the cameras i promise you cameras are perfect you need them plus they increase the value of your property okay by putting the surveillance system on my property and the solar system I increased it by almost $40,000. So I was happy, y'all. Okay, so they increased the value of your property. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm doing this to let you guys know that when you're looking at the shorter videos, please keep in mind, like, this one has the date on it. Some of them do not have the dates on them. They're older videos. That is, uh, we're just doing that to show you what we were talking about in the past. I was just speaking with somebody yesterday and they were telling me I a lot of people give me my accolades and I appreciate it um, and they're letting people know that they've gotten some of their information from us they're definitely telling them they got their information from the websites PDF section a I appreciate that as well that's why that's there documents that other people are charging people for that are on our site ladies and gentlemen why it doesn't matter what well, it doesn't matter well anyway we put the documents up there at no additional charge to anybody okay it's none of the information is free i tell you ladies and gentlemen i'm sorry i said none of the information is free all of the information hold on hold on let me let him tell you address commission none of this material is copywritten Feel free to use it as you please. Pretty good, Pretty wasn't, good it? wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen. The 
the information on the legal registers commission, that information was supposed to be free. Then they wanted to start charging people monthly subscription fees, something I told them not to do. They did it anyway. That's why you see it won't be doing nothing. And if I see it doing something again, I will implode it again. That's not how I work. Charging you guys a monthly fee. Now, we're getting ready to offer some new programs in the future, in the very near future. We're working on it now. Just put the crew on it and everything. However, right now, the Fourth Amendment Securing One's Property Program, we're working on the suit. Everybody who's in the Fourth Amendment Securing One's Property Program, you're receiving your bond for your automobiles. And now we're putting together the documents so you can go into court and sue them at least twice in small claims court for the maximum amount. This is not the value of the bond or not the value of the automobile that you're suing for. You're just suing for violation of law. This is this is just on the strength because it still leaves you the option of suing for the value of the vehicles in regular court. This is small claims court. So we're giving you not I don't want to use the word argument because I don't like argument. That puts you in dishonor, in my opinion. So we don't want arguments, but that's what we're about to do. We're about to give you guys something for which you can be able to set some things straight. You feels me? All right, ladies and gentlemen, while we do that. Please understand the secure one's property, the, uh, what is that? Uh, see, I forgot. Acknowledgement of the debt program. Okay. Those two, when you go to the legal redress, I, see, I keep saying legal redress because I just got finished listening to this. Oh God. <laughs> Sorry. I, I am. That was mine. And somebody tried to steal it from me. Y'all see what I'm saying? It was mine. S-A-T-C-O-M-M, -M. now hold on, that's an O, 911, S-A-T-C-O-M-M, 911.com. Let's click on .com. Oh, by the way, when you hear me go .com, I'm not doing the, well, I am doing a mixture of the two, the actual commercial that used to talk about .com. But I'm also doing Peanut from Jeff Dunham's The Ventriloquist. Yes, he has a character named Peanut, that dot com. And so I'm doing the mixture of the two. So I apologize if you didn't understand. It's state E-I-N. It's state E-I-N. It's state E-I-N. It's state E-I-N. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, just did a video. It will be the video that goes up right on this same day. Just did a video. It's not up on the Eon channel, but it is up on the Redress Right channel. Yeah, I still own Redress Right, people. This is the OG Redress Right channel. Okay, so that video, the Internal Revenue Service needs a hug. That is the one that's talking about Estate EIN, Estate EIN, Estate EIN. Letting people know that they have the right to use their estates. Now, you go here. See this area right here? Where it says dot com. And you see our current program, the Debt Acknowledgement Program, DAP, D-A-P. The Debt Acknowledgement Program. Click on the link and it'll take you to the page. The Fourth Amendment, this is the one where you literally are writing off the debt for all of these. This is the estate link. Estate EIN. Anyway, the Fourth Amendment Secure in One's Property Program. Okay. See? Assistance in gaining control of their decedent's estate. Filing service payment. I think that's like $30 or something to have them do it for you. But you'll have to watch that video to understand why you have the right to do it. Because it's not a decedent in the state. It's called a life estate. This is where you take control. See, just imagine going into court and them talking about the all caps name. Why do you got to say the all caps name? Say, why are you guys using my name and my property in vain? This is my property. Why are you trying to defame my corporation? Who gave you the right to tarnish my reputation? Ladies and gentlemen, when you understand that all judges have to be bonded, hold on. 
Y'all didn't hear me? Let me say it again. When you understand that all judges have to be bonded, when you understand that all public officials have to be bonded, that's why these programs are here, especially the Fourth Amendment program. Let me give you what's going on so that y'all can understand that these are not some basic little programs that somebody's just mentioning. Watch this. The first A M E N T M E N T. And we're going to pull it up. I got to keep showing this to y'all because it's got to be drilled into your heads. Oh, Urdu. <laughs> Urdu. Look at that. The Urdu. This is the, look at that. This is the first amendment to the Constitution of Pakistan in Urdu. It's a part of the Constitution of Pakistan, which. <laughs> 1974. Really? Now that's interesting. Why would the United States government have an influence on there? Ooh wee. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go to Congress because Congress is gonna give us a copy of the First Amendment. We could have gone to Cornell Law, but it don't matter. It don't matter. The First Amendment is the First Amendment. Now we're gonna break down the First Amendment. You know, break it down. I don't want nobody else to hear the sound. This love is a private affair. Okay, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Give me a second so that I can show y'all what's going on. And what I need to do in my background, we're going to shuffle some things in the background. This is in vogue, and they have to talk about runaway love, and that's what they're going to do in the background. I'm going to turn them down just a little bit because they're going to be just a little bit distracting. But I need that distraction, ladies and gentlemen, because it's 5 o'clock in the morning. Okay. The First Amendment. Congress shall make no law. So it's because of this statement right here. They're saying if Congress can make no law respecting these things, then Congress has the authority to make law. That's where Congress gets to make law is because of the so-called presumption that they're interpreting right there ain't that something go ahead there's nothing in the constitution that allows congress to make the law the people make the law pay attention what the people were saying is congress can't do it without us is what they were saying see the people make the law the people tell congress this is what we want and then congress enacts it and puts it in writing the people say this because, look, you got all these people all voting. Well, how do they compile it? Well, they give it to their representatives of the state, and the state representatives are charged with delivering it as if it's a sealed letter with a signet ring to parliament, where parliament, Congress, puts it in parchment, and it becomes the official law for the entire nation. That's how it was supposed to be. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be. That's how the first 10 amendments, remember, the people called the first 10 amendments the Constitution for the United States of America. We do ordain and establish this Constitution. So they said the Constitution was the first 10 amendments. They didn't say nothing about the 11, 12, 13, 14, 17, 18, 27th amendments. They didn't say nothing about that junk. Okay? Because that other junk wasn't enacted by the people. It was enacted by Congress. Shh. I digress. I apologize. It says, Congress shall make no law, pay attention, abridging, we're, we're needing this right here, the right of the people to petition government for redress of grievances. Now we need to understand this statement right here, to petition the government to redress their grievances. What's a grievance? Well, in, in the simplest of terms, a grievance is a complaint. So this means the people have the right to complain. Yay! I get to complain! And, and Congress can't tell me I can't! That's right. You get to complain. But you get to complain to government. <gasps> I get to complain to government? Hey! Hey, no, government, get over here. I got a bunch of complaints. No, I got a list. A book. Well, it's a book because I've been writing these complaints down since I was born. Yeah, these are all my complaints. They've never been resolved. I have the right to complain. But it doesn't just stop there with just the right to complain, ladies and gentlemen. You have the right to complain via redress. Wait a minute. You mean re-re- Wait, hold on. 
redress right? Wait, you mean I have a right to right to redress? Redress right? I got a redress right? Oh, is that what you meant when you called yourself redress? Oh, oh, snap. I get it now. No, he called himself redress right because it was the First Amendment. He, oh, okay. Okay, so you got the right to petition government to redress everything, your complaints, right? Okay, fine. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, okay. No, you don't mind if I continue now and you go sit down? Oh, uh, okay, yeah, I got, yeah, okay, I go sit down. I go sit, but go, 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 go ahead and explain. Okay, I, I, yeah, yeah, you go, go right over there. All right, all right. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> Lord have mercy. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to now take the word redress and we're going to dissect it so that you can understand something because I promise you, once you understand this, ain't nobody going to be able to take this away from you. This, this is etched in stone. Watch this. We're just going to put, I'm not even going to do the legal definition. We're going to do the definition. You, you guys with me? So, pay attention. This is how we're doing. And he says, how do I know? I don't know how he knows, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if this one in a religious song, I'm going to skip it. Because Howard Hewitt, he has a habit of doing that. I, I knew his nephew. I haven't spoken to his nephew in maybe 30 years. Never met Howard, but I knew his nephew. I was supposed to meet him a couple of times that, you know, when the family was having gatherings and everything. And I just was always busy. I couldn't make it. Anyway remedy or set right an undesirable and unfair situation so that means they got to set it right because it's it, they got to provide you remedy that's where the word remedy comes from ladies and gentlemen what's my remedy you don't understand that okay now see because you have the right to petition government for readers to grievance redress means remedy or compensation Oh, I got there. I can get money. I got to get money. I want some money. I want some compensation. But well, didn't I tell you to go over there and sit down? Would you? Would, no, no. Just go sit, sit down. Okay, I'll get with you in a second. I'm, I'm talking to them now. Yeah, they're gonna call you a fool, all right, ladies and gentlemen. I need you guys to understand something. Redress means to set something right. See, set something upright. Because it was knocked down. So now you got to correct what was broken. See, an architect being called to redress a leaning wall. To make it right, to put it right, to set it right. To correct, to rectify. This is your right. You have the right to correct a wrong through the government. Pay attention to that phrase, through the government. That means you also have the right to reparations, compensation, restitution, recompensing. You have the right to recompense, to be paid. What, you didn't know? Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why you have the right to petition for redress is because you didn't have that right if you were living at that time in England. Hey, you, you're too high for me right now, Howard. That, that's Howard Hewitt, ladies and gentlemen. That man, he can sing. Don't, don't take away Howard's credit. Man can sing. Okay, Shalimar, all that stuff, the man can sing. Okay, but but, but, but he can't sing right now <laughs> because he going to interfere and I'm going to want to hit some notes. And we can't do that with Howard right now. Okay, this ain't that time. I know some of y'all saying, thank you, Jesus. Anyway, your mom, anyway um, I'm going to finish, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at the Cambridge Dictionary. I come from Cambridge. Anyway, to put right a wrong, to give Payment for a wrong that has been done. Money. 
that you have to let's go and find out what the rest of that definition is because I think that's a good definition of redress reparations ladies and gentlemen well because redress implies your right to compensation for wrongs done and that the government must correct the wrongs if it has the authority and ability to do so that means pay attention if there is reparations that means that the official must have a mechanism for paying that reparation which means they must have liability insurance because you have the right to reparation if the official violates your right then that means that they must have liability insurance ladies and gentlemen liability insurance okay now i'm gonna prove that in a minute okay ah most managers politicians bosses of men how can women redress the balance to put right or wrong to give payment for a wrong that has been done okay that's the first one wait wait where's the other one money that you have to pay to someone else because you have injured the person or treated them badly ladies and gentlemen do you know that that's why you have to have insurance in your automobile in case you should damage or cause injury to another well that's the very same reasons why the judges and other public officials must have insurance that's why attorneys have to be bonded that's the insurance and you have the right to be compensated for Monet, Monet, okay? You have the right to be compensated. You have the right for the wrong to be corrected. It's called the law of expectancy. A phrase that I coined, a phrase that I coined, a phrase that I coined, law of expectancy. The law of expectancy says if you have a right to something, then you expect for that right to be given you without any abridgment. Oh, y'all didn't understand the First Amendment? Congress shall make no law abridging the right of the people to speech, press, assemble, and religion, as well as the number five one, petition the government for redress agreements in their right to bear arms, in their being secure in their persons, properties, possessions, assets, and to not have any searches or seizures without probable cause, and that if they are charged with a crime, that there must be evidence that they cannot be compelled to be a witness against themselves, that they have a right to cross-examine witnesses against them, that they cannot be deprived of life, liberty, or property without just compensation. Pay attention, the Fifth Amendment. The Fifth Amendment specifically talks about redress. The Fifth Amendment talks about just compensation, not just compensation, but just compensation. The Fifth Amendment is a redress right, ladies and gentlemen. That's why your property cannot be taken without redress. So let's get back to the First Amendment. Because the First Amendment implies your right to redress, that literally means, ladies and gentlemen, that you have the right to go after the judge's bond, the public official's bond, the clerk of the court's bond. So for the Secure in One's Property Program and the mortgage program. We're putting together the documents now. If you've lost your home in foreclosure, if you've lost your home in foreclosure, if you've lost your home in foreclosure, then the DAP program is the one whereby you will be going to court in small claims court and you'll be going after the insurance. Now your claim, I'll explain it now, will be against the insurance and the bond the insurance company and the bond and then the next claim will be against the bank for the same reasons you went after the insurance company and the bond and then the next complaint will be against the servicer for the same reason you went after the bank the insurance company and the bond and then the next complaint will be after the judge who allowed your property to be taken and then the next complaint will be after the sheriff who came in and took your property. Do you understand these are all public officials? They were all bonded. They all violated your rights. They all operated in a conspiracy. But you don't need to bring a conspiracy. You just need to document what happened. Just that simple. That's what we're doing, people. That's how we're helping you, helping our people. That's what the... All you got to do is go to SACOM. 
Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. All you do is click on the programs because that's what we're doing for you. We're showing you how to redress your grievances. What? Go ahead and go on the internet. Nobody else is talking about this. Go. Go anywhere in the internet. Go on. Uh, well, nobody's talking about the word redress, meaning insurance. That you have the right to compensation. I guarantee you, you will not find a single video talking about it. Guarantee. Richard Fuller said, I got something I want to show you. Richard Fuller didn't even know me. Richard Fuller had been observing me talking to other people. The same as you hear me talking to you, this is what I do, this is what I've been doing. I didn't start doing this because I heard a YouTube video. I told you I've been doing this since I was 16 after I won that first case. In court. When I walked out of that courtroom, I'm, I'm still 15 when I walked out of that courtroom. I got that ticket in August of 1983. I am still 15 years old. I hadn't even had my car for two months. Okay? And when I got that ticket, peoples, no, as a matter of fact, it wasn't August. I apologize. It was October. No, no, no. It wasn't August. It was October. I had just got in the car at the end of August. So it was October. Anyway, when I got that stupid ticket and I won that case, Nobody else in court with me. I didn't have no friends. I didn't. Nobody was in court with me. My friends didn't show up in court with me. They were all at school. This was on a school day, okay? I had to take off from school to go handle this ticket. My mama couldn't take off from work, so I had to go in there by myself. The judge says, look, or, you know you're going to have to handle this by yourself. Really? I'm just 15. How am I going to handle this case by myself, judge? I don't know the law. You think you can do it? Yeah. How much time you think you're going to need? Two weeks. Okay. Trial date set for two weeks. I came back in two weeks, had all my papers and ducks in a row, and walked out of there with a smile on my face. Talking about, yeah, the only thing I, the only thing I knew is that what the officer said, all I could do was, I rebutted what he said. I just gave the police, I gave the judge a receipt saying, like, hey, it was just some bad times. I replaced them. And he says, okay. Case dismissed. Ta-da. No fees being paid. No nothing. And I walked out of there. And everybody else, all these adults were coming to me, asking me to help them with their case. Okay? I, I'm not joking when I say this. This is not, that's, you have no idea. I, I'm laughing about it now because I, I didn't even, it didn't dawn on me that I'm the child in the room and every. Adult is coming to me asking me questions, but that's been my life, people. Adults coming to me, talking to me about their problems, telling me about their problems. And I'm not joking when I tell you that my life has been filled with adults coming and telling me about their problems. Discussing their problems with me. Marriage problems, uh, financial problems, because... I wasn't your normal, average, everyday kid. There was a, I, I could say there was a maturity, but there wasn't a maturity at the same time. There were a lot of things, life, that I'd never experienced. But the maturity as far as information, knowledge, all of that stuff I had. So let me say this again, ladies and gentlemen. We talked about the deceit in the state. I know the IRS see, see this on the website. That's why they want to investigate. So that's why the previous video was done, to kill all that noise. We're not going to put anybody in any position to compromise them. So if you got that deceit in the state, $30. If you listen to that video, I promise you, we're going to get a whole lot more 30, 30 some dollars. I don't, well, I don't know if it's $30 or not. Let me, let me, let me make sure. Got to click on the link. Because, you know, I'm just like y'all. I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I'm not, man, let's see. What's the... I don't know what the price is, y'all. I, I know that it will give it to me once I click. I know it's 33. I think it's $33, like 33 degree masonry. So because there were videos done on this. So I it just that's why it's just a receipt. Eon Foundation. Okay. Whew. Lord have mercy. And then we have the Fourth Amendment Secure One's Property Program. Ladies and gentlemen. You get these wayward judges that take your property. I just had a young man call me um, 
another young man, it was his son, and he told his son, whose vehicle was just taken by the police, he asked him to give me a call. And the son was talking to me, and uh, he was asking a lot of questions because he, he simply just didn't know. And I kind of felt sorry for the young man, but as I explained to him, it doesn't work that way. I said, I told him, I said, your father knows this. I said, I'll answer a couple of questions, but I won't answer all of your questions because that's not how this works. I said, because I really don't have time for this. I don't have time to explain to you everything. I said, this is what you need to do. And then he explained something. I said, no, the way you take care of that is by doing this. And he said, oh, okay. The fact is, he already has the bond for his vehicle. Yay! He already had that. He didn't know that he could show that to the peace officer as proof that he has the collateral to compensate anyone should he get in an accident up to 25 up to 50 up to $100,000, depending on the collateral. He doesn't have to pay an insurance company month after month after month after month after month. Now, hold on. Hold on. Those of y'all who don't understand this, the collateral bond does not cover your vehicle for damages. It only covers the person for whom you may cause damage. See, redress doesn't imply you get to bring a complaint against yourself. You know what I'm saying, Vern? No, it's in case you harm another. The same thing as the courts. They must have a bond in case they harm another. That's why they make it mandatory for you to have liability insurance. So the bond for your automobile is, operates as liability insurance. It shows proof that you have the collateral just in case you get sued. Now, I would be remiss if, to say this as well. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, if you were to get into an accident and they were to file a claim against you and that claim went against the bond, which is what it's supposed to do, that's why you have it, you will be required to pay back the bond company. Now, hold on. Many of you guys are believing that the hour style money were to stop working. No, they haven't. Just you guys don't know how to enforce them. Shh. I'm not going to tell you. This is not my job. Don't call me up asking me because I'm not going to tell you. Second, I have a woman who did something similar to an hour style money order. <clears throat> we will be talking next week. She's already requested a consult. She's already sent one of those type of instruments to the Treasury. The Treasury sent her a receipt offsetting the debt. The Treasury! Excuse me? The Treasury? Are you going to show us how to do that? No, that's not my job. People, Lord have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not my job to show you things like that. My job is to sit up here and point you in the right direction. My job is not to give you a quick fix. My job is to give you permanent fixes. So for those of you who have student loan, auto loans, and what is this other thing, home loans? The debt acknowledgement program. Or the going to Amerilegion, A-M-A-R-A-L-E-G-I-O-N, Amerilegion.com, that program. Those are the ones for you. The Fourth Amendment Securing One's Property Program, that's for the people who have been riding around with no license plate, no registration, and they need to understand why they have the right to do that and the paperwork to give, when they have the right to do that, and suing the DMV and getting complete custody of their property, their automobiles. That's what the Fourth Amendment Secure in One's Property Program is about. So if you're interested in those programs, all you got to do is click on the link. This will take you, is it here? I, I don't know if it takes it here. Uh, hmm. Give me one second. Car loan package, home loan package. Yeah, this is it. Student loan package. Oh, in package. These are the packages, ladies and gentlemen. Ha ha! Ha ha! Okay. This is Artful. Artful. Artful! Yay! AMCF! Artful! AMCF! AMCF Real Estate Private Foundational Trust Organization. AMCF Real Estate Private Foundational Trust organization, and this trust foundational organization, but 
private foundational trust organization. Okay. Artful. Official site. Here at Artful. <laughs> okay. That's what they're doing for you guys. And they're still working. Oh, guys, if only you knew. 29 different letters going out to all of these agencies. Now, we're taking those 29 letters and we have to send them to the credit reporting bureaus because the agencies haven't responded. Ta-da! That's why it takes some time. We tell people at least six months, at the minimum, to 13 months. For some people, it's almost been a year. Why? Because we have to wait. There's a statutory time period which we have to wait before we send out the next letter. Okay, you'll have these other people talking about doing debt and how to get rid of debt, and they'll be saying, and we've done this and we've done it. Yes, they've done this and done that, okay? But we're not using their method, their program. We're using exactly what the law allows. We're killing presumptions so that you don't have any arguments, so nobody can say that you didn't do what you were supposed to do. You inquired, you inquired, you inquired, but you did it through us. Oh, and there's tax credits because, see, <laughs> we have a limited power of attorney. Limited power of attorney, which allows us to speak on your behalf, that has an arbitration clause. See, none of these other organizations embed arbitration clauses in their contracts, in their agreements. So when we send it to the financial institutions or the dealer, the creditor, whomever it is, they pay attention. They receive the arbitration agreement. Okay, now here's the secure program. TikTok, which is the same thing right here. See, see, same thing, same thing. Okay, we're going to close that one. All right, see, got to get the key. Identification while in public includes property. Insurance, what is it really? Property rights, are they protected? Absolute title is an exclusive title to property, which excludes all others. Wait, hold on, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. You're going to learn something. Promise. Do you know if I purchase this automobile? And <laughs> watch this. You're only going to love this. You know if I purchase this automobile that had a promissory note on the original purchase, and I purchased it, and it's a used automobile, but I know the original automobile was purchased by a promissory note because, you know, <laughs> that's a wild guess, but that's the way it's done. Did you know that when I purchased the automobile, I have purchased all, everything that's inside of this automobile, all of the attachments and adhesements to this automobile, the tires, the rims, the uh, door panels, the screws, the bolts, the nuts, the oil, the gaskets. Do you know that I get the brake pads, the cylinders? Do you know I get the seats and the windows and, and, and the seat belts? Oh, God, do you, and everything that's in the trunk, that's all mine. Once I purchase the vehicle, they can't come back to me and say, oh, no, uh, I left something in the trunk. No, you didn't leave nothing in the trunk. I purchased this from you. Whatever's in the trunk, that belongs to me now. If it's something illegal, then I'll give you the credit for it when I talk to the police. But other than that, you ain't getting nothing. It's mine. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. If you purchase a home, if you purchase a vehicle that has a promissory note associated with it originally, when it was originally purchased, pay attention then you own all of that, including the trading of the security on the market, the OID. See, when you acquire the property, you have the right to, when you do your research, do the OID on your acquired property because guess what they don't do? They don't do margin calls on these promissory notes. When was the last time you paid off a house and the bank told you, hey, we did a margin call on the promissory note, because you sold off the house, you brought the maturity, you sped up the maturity, so here, here's your portion of that, and we do appreciate you doing business with us. They don't pull those notes off the market. They still trade those. They bundle those in mortgage-backed securities. They bundle them. So how are they going to pull them back? Y'all don't understand, do y'all? That means it's being traded on the market still. So when you purchase it, you acquire the promissory note. You'll purchase it outright. That means all of the attachments and adhesions because when you purchase it, the deal with the original lender is over. 
it becomes yours. You become the hold, holder, hold, <coughs> hold, <coughs> holder in due course. You become the secure party creditor. If you don't believe me, go ahead and listen to what the Supreme Court of New Hampshire said in the Grimes case on that failed Senate bill, uh, no, House bill for the New Hampshire government known as 1778. Okay? Notice what they say. You become the owner of the security. I know. And that means you can calculate the OID because it's already reached maturity. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Technomicalities, technomicalities, technomicalities. Okay. This is just so that you guys will understand. There's a lot more going on. A lot more understanding of things. I, I don't call me to ask me to explain to you about OIDs and how to do that with your vehicle and what other properties you acquire and homes and all that. No, don't do that. You have to do your own research. I'm not here to do your research. I'm here to tell you what I know. I'm not here to teach you what I know. This is That's not what this is. Okay? This is just to let you know what I know. You have to do your research to see how that is so. But where do I start? You start with, from the beginning, from understanding what's going on. And then you go from there. So if you start from the beginning and you can see, hey, man, man finish line way up there. Hey, look, they got a sign up to the finish line. I can see it from here. How do I get there? There, there ain't no roads getting there. Oh, I got obstacles I got to jump over and climb through. And oh, man. They didn't tell me I was going to have to jump through hoops and obstacles and... Really? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, you're going to have to jump through hoops. Yes, you're going to have obstacles to overcome. What do you think? They're going to just give it to you? Nuh-uh. Because I ain't going to just give it to you. Okay. Thank you, Howard. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this information was beneficial. I've been... All I can tell you, since the beginning of the year, it's been the year for me to try to give out as much information as possible because as I told many of you, there's going to come a time when I'm not going to be as accessible for putting out information. So you might as well, the empowerment series, you might as well focus on that and then come to these type of videos, okay? A lot of videos to choose from and substantive information that's what we're focusing on howard take us on out of here thank y'all for being here and y'all just don't forget about howard because this man can sing and y'all let howard know that i have a lot of appreciation for him and gotta give him his props everybody something in the air If only you knew. Gotta go.